Hello and welcome back to Overvolted, where today I'm going to be trying to build a DIY battery out of 18650 cells. And I'm hoping I actually build a battery and not just a fire. But that's what this is for. I want to learn how to build a battery for a few reasons. Um, I just want to be able to make my own so I can fit them in custom e-bike build projects that I'm working on or RC cars or whatever. So I decided it's time to learn and you guys can learn with me. So I have four 18650 cells here that I was just gonna build into a larger capacity RC battery. The battery it currently takes uses actually two 18650 cells in it. This truck is just a cheap one online. I have modified it a bit, but nothing special. It doesn't have a very big battery tray, so it has to kind of fit these smaller batteries. So I'm gonna start out by just building a double height battery. It will teach me how to use the spot welder, the whole nickel strip thing, and, and a little bit about wiring up the balance wires. What you're gonna need for this project is a spot welder. I'll have a link to the ones and all the stuff that I'm using in this description. Also, you're gonna need some batteries. In this case, there are 18650 cells. There's all sorts of different lithium chemistry batteries that you can get, different sizes and heights and whatever. And I got these for free with an 18650 charger that I bought. And I didn't really have any other plans for them. So I figure I might as well put the four that came free together in a battery and use it in my RC. One drawback of doing this is these are the button type lithium batteries. Normally when you spot weld batteries together to build a pack, you use the flat top. So you have this kind of like the bottom of this. Both, both sides look flat and you have this larger surface area to spot weld your nickel strip too. I did a quick Google search to see if you can spot weld to these button top batteries and I didn't find much, so we'll see. You'll also need nickel strip. And because I'm building an RC battery, you're going to need a balance wire. My specific battery that I'm gonna be building is a 2S2P or two series, two parallel battery. So I needed a 2S balance wire. Use this because your charger for RC batteries has all the balancing smartness built into it and you don't have to have a BMS on the battery. So the battery stays smaller and just when you charge them up, you plug in this thing so it can monitor which cells have what voltage. And you might also need a fire extinguisher. Or in this case, the uh, first alert stops fires fast can. I am hoping I don't start a fire, but I'm thinking since this is my first time, I might as well do it with a very small project so it will be a smaller fire. I'm gonna end up just hot gluing all four of these batteries together and uh, wiring them all up to save some space. Okay, let's make sure this is really well shaken up. This thing does grease, electric, fabric, or trash fires. I love a good trash fire. First thing you wanna do is make sure all of your cells are at a very similar voltage if they're at a very different voltage, then that voltage jump could overload the cell and you can cause fires and problems. So I charge these all up and test them out. They're all right in the same voltage window. So we should be good there. So I'm just gonna start gluing them up. Man, why is hot glue so hot? Put a little bit of glue on this cell. I'm gonna glue them up in sets of two first. Well, it's not pretty, but four batteries are now glued together. A little off axis. I should have probably used some sort of, you know, right angle. <laughs> so that it was all nice, but you know, the truck's not gonna care. I need to spot weld them together. When you connect batteries in parallel, you are expanding the capacity of the battery. When you connect them in series, the capacity stays the same, but you're expanding the voltage, so you're doubling the voltage if you had two, and then so on and so forth. All right, I've got the camera down here so you can see what's going on with a nice close-up, and the capacitors inside the spot welder have been plugged in and charging up for a while, so they are up to 4.8 volts. I hope that's enough to start the spot welding. We'll see. For the first settings, I have it on a two second delay with a 75 on the power or gears. I don't know why they call it gears. If you guys know why they call the power level the gears for spot welding, let me know. All right, so I'm gonna line my nickel strip up on one of my parallel connections here. And then 
I have it set to two seconds. So let's see what a 75% or 75 power does at two seconds. Whoa. Wow, guys. That actually like went really well. The voltage didn't drop much. I think my power is a little too high. It almost blew right through those. So let's turn the power down. I don't know where I should start. Maybe let's do 58. I like the two seconds. It gives me time to react in case I'm wrong. There's a little, I like that there's a little graphic on the screen that shows when, that accompanies the delay and shows you when it's about to do the weld. Whoa, look at that, but it blew right through. Is that because, Woo! Maybe I'll just go to 50, that seems like a nice number. I might see if I can put another one over top of this and maybe, maybe that extra thickness will be good for it. Whoa, that seemed better. Awesome. That seems a lot better. Okay. It's like actually doing what I thought it would do now. Is this nickel strip fighting each other? They're upset. They do not want to be together. Okay, they're together forever now. Now something that I have zero idea on is how it's going to weld to the button top batteries. Ooh. Well, I don't think it loved that. So it was actually really easy to weld onto the flat thing. That's probably why people don't weld onto these button tops. But, I mean, it's what I got. It's my extra cell, so let's try this one more time. It does not want to stick to that, does it? Oh, I got it to stick. I got it to stick. Now let's get it to stick on the other side. Okay, so I just have to make sure that both of my probes are over that little button, I think which, you know, makes sense. It's not gonna weld itself onto air, but now you have such a, a smaller surface to, area to work with. And I might just do two for that, just cause I don't have the space. So this is probably why you use the right cells when you're doing this. I won't be using these button cells anymore, but I just had to use them up for something, you know? Okay. That was a lot better, a lot better. So I guess you can spot weld onto button cells. You don't have near as much space to make that contact. So I'm just gonna do two there, but it can happen. Okay, so now I've gotta pick a side to bridge these two together. Let's go from negative to positive here. It's gonna go up to the positive side I'm gonna bridge these over to this side. It's gonna to connect to the negative and out. This will be the battery's positive end. So we'll have the battery's negative end and positive end on the same side. All right, spot welder. I think the spot welder is really doing the trick. Well, that didn't work. Let's try this other side first. Okay, that's not making a connection through. I might need to turn the power up. There we go, 67 got through. So, I mean, there's a total of four nickel strips there now. Whoa, look at that. Not only did I have a little bit of fire roll on the table, it actually welded the whole thing together. It looks absolutely hideous. See that? See that little monstrosity I made? Maybe you can't. Is it focusing? And let's see if we have the voltage we want. Look at that, 8.26. Great. 
next up is to connect this balance wire. This is a 2S balance wire and this is a 2S battery pack that we're building. Normally you solder these onto three points. One right between where the series connection is and I've gone ahead and elongated that wire so it can get down to the bottom of the pack. And then the other two are on the battery packs positive and the negative. I've gone ahead and done the soldering on a piece of nickel strip that is outside or off the battery pack. That way I don't put a lot of the heat from the soldering iron into the cells. And then I will just spot weld these where I need them. Since all of this is electrically connected, it can really be anywhere on here. So I'm gonna put it right there. One other thing we're gonna to need to put on is this XT60 connector. This is where the battery is going to discharge from. So I forgot that I need to solder this on as well. So again, to avoid heat to the cells, I'm gonna go back and just put them on these pieces of nickel strip and then we'll attach the nickel strip to the whole pack. All right, so those have now been added. I know I'm not the best at soldering in the world, but hey, that's okay. So now I'm just gonna connect these with the spot welder. There. All right, the positive lead is on. Let's do the negative lead. Okay, I'm gonna just touch and hold that so that I can hold it in place. And then, So this is my very first DIY battery. I know it's pretty ugly, but hey, I think it'll work. Next step is gonna be putting some of the shrink wrap, this nice blue shrink wrap that you see on all these batteries on it, which is just gonna be sliding the whole battery pack in there and using a heat gun to shrink it around. All right, so let's cut a piece about the right size, probably a little, little overlap. To cover up the other end, I'm thinking I will just take another piece, a single layer of this, and wrap it around here, and then have the, have the main one hold it all down. Let's try it. And that's gonna be for the one side. This other half of this is gonna cover up the other. And then I'm gonna put this whole thing, and then I'm gonna shrink wrap this whole thing inside one large tube. Okay, so it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but I think it might do the job. My shrink wrap hole that I cut was a little too big and I also overheated it a little bit on this side and the shrink wrap burned. So, hot glue? All right, let's bring the spider webs back out here. Here it is, time to test it. All right, so if I go into the monitor setting of this charger, it sees two cells, which is good. Uh, let me click balance here and it's gonna balance them out. And this is where I stand here with my can of fire protection. One thing I notice is it's functional. It sees it as an actual normal battery pack that's not just made at home. So I think that's a success. But there's one thing left to do. Let's pop it in an RC car and go drive around. Super excited. All right, we're gonna just give this thing a quick little test in the backyard here. Let me know if you guys wanna see some more RC content. We can take it to the skate park, bash it, ramp it. This is a cheapo little truck that I put a hobby wing kit inside. Let me know if you want to see some more RC stuff and we'll check it out. I've got my fish flops on. What do you guys think? They were a gift. All right, it's working.
It works! Oops. It's hard to drive one-handed. Some of the people I watch who do RC stuff have their phone mounted to the front of the controller, like right there. And if we do more of that, I think this is that's what we're definitely gonna have to do so I can drive better and not run this into the wilderness where all the raccoons live. Now I know how to build my own battery packs and that is gonna be really cool for some future projects. So subscribe if you want to see more of me talking to a camera alone in a room. <laughs>